I realize I'm looking at the name of most likely the murderer, and I'm the only person in the world who knows it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 murder mysteries that were finally solved. It's a needle in a haystack, but the needle's in there somewhere, and it's our job to find it. For this list, we'll be looking at infamous fatal cold cases that took years until the culprit was discovered, finally closing the investigation. Which incidents did we miss? Let us know below. Jay Cook and Tanya Van Kylenborg. In November 1987, Canadian couple Jay Cook and Tanya Van Kylenborg took a business trip to Seattle, Washington. According to their ferry ticket, Jay and Tanya got to the dock in downtown Seattle around midnight. They were going to sleep in the van, then return home the next day. But by the following evening, they still hadn't arrived back home, and they hadn't called. However, on the 24th, Van Kylenborg's body was found near Alger, Washington. Two days later, Cook's body was located in Snohomish County, nearly 60 miles away. As Van Kylenborg had been assaulted, DNA evidence was kept, but no one was brought to justice. But there was no forensic evidence linking Jay's death to anyone else, and no match between the DNA found on Tanya's body and any law enforcement database. Until 2018, anyway. Investigators used the online service GEDmatch, uploaded the DNA from Van Kylenborg's clothes, and found a match from multiple sources. This led them to arrest the profile's cousin, William Earl Talbot II. After matching his sample with a cup he had dropped, in 2019, he was found guilty and received two life sentences. For the families, this was closure. For my family and I, it is our first day without the weight, the burden, Anna Jean Kane. In October 1988, the body of Anna Jean Kane was located within the Antolani Trail in Perry Township, Pennsylvania. She had been strangled and placed in the wooded area. Police say a man who lives nearby was walking along the trail and saw Anna's body about 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. But detectives do not believe this was the scene of the crime. DNA evidence from her clothes was stored by the police. By 1990, the local newspaper, the Reading Eagle, called for information on the killing. They received an anonymous letter that contained intimate details that led the cops to believe this person was responsible for Kane's slaying. Reading Eagle received an anonymous letter signed from a concerned citizen that had numerous intimate details about the homicide. In 2022, the DNA evidence matched the saliva on the envelope that sent the disturbing note. The Parabon Nano Labs in Virginia used the profile to link it to Scott Grimm, who had been arrested in 2002 for another crime. However, he passed away in 2018. The fact that he is deceased, he will never face justice as, I, as we all would hope but we solved it. We gave some closure to the family. Janet Love. In April 1986, an assailant entered the apartment of Janet Love in Bedford, Texas, assaulted her, then fatally shot her. Love was working the three to midnight shift at DFW Airport. She had come home um, from that shift. Uh, that's when we believe she was attacked. While the police followed several leads, they couldn't find the person responsible, yet they kept the DNA evidence and entered it into the FBI combined DNA index system, also known as CODIS. In 2020, with help from the University of North Texas, genealogists put a profile together on the culprit, Ray Anthony Chapa. Says Chapa held a string of odd jobs over the years and had a criminal history that included theft and drug possession. He had lived near Love in 1986, just a thousand feet away. However, in January 2021, Chapa passed away from a terminal illness. Regardless, the police believed he had committed other crimes since he lived in Illinois and Montana and began investigating this possibility. None of it's going to bring her back, but... It, it is um, some sense of justice. Joette Smith. In March 1983, the body of Joette Smith was located in the San Lorenzo River near Ben Lomond, California, where she was the owner of the restaurant Buffalo Gals. On March 29, 1983, Smith was found dead in the San Lorenzo River in Ben Lomond. The local community was devastated by the popular businesswoman's demise. While police interviewed many people, there were no suspects. But in 1988, Eric David Drummond came up in the investigation. They learned that Smith had turned down a man who turned out to be the suspect when he asked her out. Still, that was all circumstantial. He had apparently asked Smith on a date and was rejected. However, there was no evidence of his involvement in her end, until 2022, that is. Using new technology, a DNA profile from Smith's clothes was created that matched Drummond, who had a history of assault crimes. Yet before he could be arrested, Drummond took his own life. We thought like we might have the small chance of, of, of solving it with DNA technology and then um, you know, it ended up working out for us. So I think it gives us a lot of momentum going forward. A lot of Maurice Chivarella. In March 1964, Maurice Chivarella walked to school in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Sadly, this was the last time the young girl was seen alive, as her body was discovered later the same day in a coal mine pit. She went on her way toward the school. She was never seen alive again. Later that day, her body was found in a coal stripping pit about two miles away. 
Chivarella had been kidnapped, assaulted, and slain. Sadly, the police were unable to find the person responsible. Years later, the DNA found on Chivarella's clothes was uploaded to an online database. In 2019, the state police unveiled these images of a possible suspect at various ages, 25, 40, and 60. It is based on DNA technology used on evidence for the crime scene. In 2020, work from a genealogist and then 18-year-old student Eric Schubert discovered a lead, a distant cousin. This led investigators to James Fort. However, he passed away in 1980 at the age of 38 from natural causes. In 2022, Fort's body was exhumed and the DNA matched. That sample provided the final piece needed to confirm Fort was indeed the killer. Everything that had to go right did. Um, we just kept chugging forward with these really small DNA matches until we got the big fish. Lloyd Dwayne Bogle and Patricia Kalitsky. In January 1956, Lloyd Dwayne Bogle was found fatally shot next to his car in Great Falls, Montana. The victim was Dwayne Bogle. Dwayne was from Texas. He was an airman at, at Malmstrom Air Force Base. The following day, the body of Patricia Kalitsky was discovered. The teenage couple was seemingly slain by the same person. The police followed many leads, including notorious gangster Whitey Bulger, but nothing concrete was established. Whitey Bulger was a known killer who had potentially murdered numerous people. And during our research, we found that he was in Great Falls in the 1950s. In 2001, investigators created a DNA profile of the suspect found in Kalitsky's autopsy. Years later, a match was found on genealogy websites with a distant relative. This led the cops to Kenneth Gould, who grew up near Kalitsky's home. However, Gould was cremated in 2007, so in 2021, the police tested his children and found Gould was the culprit for this grim 65-year-old crime. DNA technology eventually led to Gould. Three of his children would consent to submitting a DNA sample resulting in a match. Rita Curran. In July 1971, a roommate discovered the body of school teacher Rita Curran in their apartment in Burlington, Vermont. The young teacher was murdered just two weeks after moving out of her parents' home into an apartment. There were signs she had been assaulted before her demise. The police suspected that infamous serial killer Ted Bundy was responsible as he was born in the area. However, he denied it and there was no proof. The case unsolved for decades until now, thanks to how meticulous investigators were back then. In 2014, DNA from a cigarette butt at the scene was analyzed. Unfortunately, neither the National Crime Database nor the main suspects matched the profile. In 2022, the cigarette, along with additional DNA from Curran's clothes, was examined by genealogy experts. This led to a match to William DeRoots, a neighbor to Curran, whose then wife gave a false alibi for. He turned to Michelle and asked her and told her that if the police ever showed up again, she was to tell him that he was home all night because he had a criminal history, and if they knew he was out, they would come after him for this. DeRuz, however, passed away in 1983. Shannon Rose Lloyd and Renee Cuevas. In May 1987, Shannon Rose Lloyd was assaulted and slain in her bedroom in Garden Grove, California. In May of 1987, 23-year-old Shannon Lloyd was found murdered in Garden Grove inside her own bedroom. In February 1989, Rene Cuevas' body was located near the Marine Corps Air Station in El Toro, now known as Lake Forest. In both of these crimes, neither perpetrator was discovered. It wasn't until 2003 that these two cases were connected together. In 2021, the Orange County District Attorney's investigative genetic genealogy team found that DNA evidence from the murders was linked to Reuben J. Smith, who lived in the area in the 80s. Reuben Smith was identified using genetic genealogy. Investigators say the first piece of the puzzle came from Smith himself, who was forced to give his DNA in 1998. In 1998, he was arrested for assault and attempted murder. As such, his DNA was on file. However, in 1999, Smith took his own life. The wound was closed, and then when we get the call, it just it opens up all again. BTK. From the outside, Dennis Raiders seemed like a nice, normal person. After all, he had a family and was high up in the local church and a Cub Scout leader. When you look at his lifestyle, I mean, he really didn't fit the profile of a serial killer. I mean, he blended in. You know, the president of his church congregation, Boy Scout leader, you know, lived in the suburbs uh, outside of Wichita. I mean, he blended in. But behind the scenes, he had taken the lives of 10 people in Wichita and Park City, Kansas from 1974 to 1991. Calling himself BTK, the serial killer anonymously sent letters to the cops and media about his horrid crimes. In 2004, Raider contacted authorities again. By the following year, Raider sent a floppy drive to the media to taunt them more. A local news station receives yet another package from the BTK killer. Inside it, the item police had been hoping for, a computer disk. Instead, they found metadata on the drive that linked it to his church and contained his name. In August 2005, Raider was found guilty of the 10 murders and was sentenced to 175 years. Judge Gregory Waller sentences Dennis Raider to the maximum allowed. 
10 consecutive life sentences. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The Golden State Killer In 2001, the police discovered that the original Night Stalker and a serial assaulter that had terrorized areas around Sacramento, California, were in fact the same person. You started looking at the devastation that this guy wrought. You're taunting the police, you're taunting the population, and you, you're you never caught. In 2013, he was given the moniker of the Golden State Killer, who had been on a rampage of crimes from 1974 to 1986, including 120 burglaries, 51 assaults, and 13 slayings. Along the way, through phone calls, he mocked the police as they struggled to find him. Desperate to capture him, investigators literally chased down thousands of leads. In 2018, a new genetic genealogy technique linked the Golden State Killer DNA from Joseph James D'Angelo through family members who had willingly uploaded their profiles to databases. New technology was D'Angelo's downfall. The Golden State Killer's genetic profile had been plugged into the genealogical website GEDmatch.com, and it returned a link to genetic material stored there by one of D'Angelo's relatives. In 2020, the former police officer was sentenced to life in prison for his horrendous criminal history. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.